Hallelujah. Christ is risen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, on this day you open the way of eternal life to every race and nation by the promised gift of the Holy Spirit. Shed abroad this gift throughout the world by the preaching of the gospel that it may reach to the ends of the earth. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. reading from the book of Genesis. Now the whole earth had one language and the same words, and as they migrated from the east, they came upon a plain in the land of Shinar and settled there. And they said to one another, Come, let us make bricks and burn them thoroughly. And they had brick for stone and bitumen for mortar. Then they said, Come, let us build ourselves a city and a tower with its top in the heavens, and let us make a name for ourselves. Otherwise we shall be scattered abroad upon the face of the whole earth. The Lord came down to see the city and the tower which mortals had built. And the Lord said, Look, they are one people, and they have all one language. And this is only the beginning of what they will do. Nothing that they propose to do will now be impossible for them. Come, let us go down and confuse their language there, so that they will not understand one another's speech. So the Lord scattered them abroad from there over the face of all the earth, and they left off building the city. Therefore it was called Babel, 
because there the Lord confused the language of all the earth. And from there the Lord scattered them abroad over the face of all the earth. The word of the Lord. reading from the Acts of the Apostles. When the day of Pentecost had come, the disciples were all together in one place, and suddenly from heaven there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as of fire appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit, and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. As Father held the Union to Jerusalem for them, and as Father brought the school chicken man out of the court, that's what I am here with him. And I know that he's a student of the shop, come from the to some of the students, came in that is here to ask me to sign their ID and wish to offer the ladies. See, and that's the sensation. Wir hören wir in einem Gebiet 
Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. And at this sound the crowd gathered and was bewildered, because each one heard them speaking in the native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, Are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in our own native language? Parthians, Medes, Elamites, and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus in Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs. In our own languages, we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, what does this mean? But others sneered and said, they are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them. Men of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk as you suppose, for it is only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even upon my slaves, both men and women in those days, I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show portents in the heaven above, and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and smoky mist. The sun will shall, be, shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day. Then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
The Holy Gospel of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, according to John. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus said, If you know me, you will know my Father also. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. Philip said to him, Lord, show us the Father, and we will be satisfied. Jesus said to him, Have I been with you all this time, Philip, and you still do not know me? Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, Show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me? The words that I say to you, I do not speak on my own, but the Father who dwells in me does his works. Believe me that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me. But if you do not, then believe me because of the works themselves. Very truly, I tell you, the one who believes in me will also do the works that I do, and in fact, will do greater works than these, because I am going to the Father. I will do whatever you ask in my name, so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If in my name you ask me for anything, I will do it. If you love me, you will keep my commandments. And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to be with you forever. This is the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive, because it neither sees him nor knows him. You know him because he abides with you and he will be in you. I have said these things to you while I am still with you, but the Advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you everything and remind you of all that I have said to you. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not let them be afraid. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. I speak to you today in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. I will never forget the Pentecost Sunday when a visitor slipped into the back door just a little bit late as we were beginning to read the Acts of the Apostles the way we did today. They were somewhere in that back corner over there. She came in, looked around, seeing and hearing all the commotion with the folks reading in their different languages. And instead of sitting down, she turned around and walked right out the door. <laughs> Let's face it. We here today, most of us, have the advantage of knowing the scripture passage, and, and most of us have experienced our way of presenting this passage of the Acts of the Apostles. We do our best to illustrate the chaos of the day, but could you imagine? Jerusalem was full of people that day. It was 50 days after the Passover. It was 50 days after the resurrection of Jesus Christ, but most didn't really know or understand that yet. For them, it was 50 days after the Passover. And now the faithful were gathered for another feast day. 
This one, the Shabbat, commemorates God's gift of the Ten Commandments to Moses and to the Hebrew people. Jerusalem was hustling and bustling with faithful Jews from all over the known world, each bringing their own language, each bringing their own joys and heartaches from life, each trying to be faithful to the one and true God. This was the fertile soil that the Holy Spirit chose to unleash the disciples upon. Filled and empowered by the Holy Spirit, the disciples went out and proclaimed Jesus Christ, the fulfillment of all the law and the prophets, the fulfillment of God's promise to all of creation since Adam and Eve, the fulfillment of of a life of faith lived out. And somehow these people who came from so many different faraway lands, people who spoke so many different languages and dialects, these people who only had their faith and belief in God in common, somehow these disciples, these simple Galileans were able to speak so eloquently proclaiming this man who was the Son of God, the long-awaited Messiah. And miraculously, everyone heard and understood in their own language. And somehow what appeared to be chaos to some, upon further review, turned out to be quite the opposite. It turned out to be quite beautiful. Even though on face value to the casual observer there appeared to be disorder running rampant throughout the streets, the reality was that the unifying thread of Jesus Christ was the one thing that made this day make any sense. It was the one thing that was bringing order to what, was otherwise, what otherwise could have just been described as a mob. Recently, I was listening to a podcast on Johann Sebastian Bach's work, Credo, from his Mass in B minor. And the description of what Bach was doing in this massive piece of work sounded to me exactly like what I was trying to just describe on this first Pentecost. In particular, the lecturer and the podcast were were walking us listeners through the first movement of the Credo section of Bach's Mass in B minor. It began very simply. Credo in unum deum. I believe in one God. And then more voices were added and wrapped around that bass line the underpinning all along his credo. There is unity and simplicity in it as they are all saying the same thing. All are using their own unique voices and bringing in their own interpretation with the gifts that God had given them. And yet credo in unum deum is the extent of the text for that that entire movement. No other words were needed. As I was working on my sermon, I, I got excited. Um, some say, you know, priests geek out at stuff like this. Um, I said, wouldn't it be cool if Dr. Turk played this for us? And I thought, so I called him. And he did not laugh at me, at least not while I was on the phone with him. But after explaining how complicated this two-hour piece of work was, and having not heard exactly the selection that I was listening to, we thought it better not to attempt this today. However, an hour later, I received a call back from Gordon, and upon further review, he figured another, less complicated way to do this sermon illustration. So after receiving a brief music appreciation lesson from him, where I learned about cantus firmus, contrapuntals, and fugues. And then, kindly, Gordon used words I could understand. 
He described this other piece he wanted to use as an organ fugue in Bach and C. It's based on the closing movement of Bach's Mass in B minor. So as you listen, make note that the, the music and all its parts in one harmonious relationship will be building in intensity. They're all singing or saying the same thing, even though they start on different notes in different places. They will have the same voice, different notes, all moving and flowing in unity while the layers of voices give it complexity and richness. So, Dr. Turk, take it away. So if you were listening closely, those same simple notes that he began playing with were the underpinnings of everything. As, as complex as it got, it was all there, holding everything in place. And it seems to me that the complexity, the harmony, and the unity found in music is a wonderful way to try and understand the Holy Spirit. Our English language or any language for that matter, is limited, it's finite, and it will fall short. And yet in music we can hear and experience an emotion or a concept that words will fall short of describing. It may be because we experience something to that in our lives, and it means something just for us. But those emotions are there. Music can bring the words and ideas to life. That woman who walked in and then walked right back out of St. Mary's that day, that day she couldn't hear the music, at least not while she was here. She wasn't ready. All she heard was chaos. But that does not mean that that was the end of her faith story. We don't know. We do know that God continues to work, and God will continue to work in her life, because the baseline continues on and is always working in the world through the faithful, through the church, through us, through God's orchestra. It will be saying there is one God. God's Son, Jesus Christ, died for our sins. God raised Jesus from the dead to defeat death and sin once and for all. Jesus ascended back to God and now judge, judges both the quick and the dead. The gift of the Holy Spirit was given to creation so that not one of us would be left alone, comfortless. In the Holy Spirit, we have an advocate who will give us the words, who gives us God's directions in life. 
Some of us can hear it very plainly right now. Some of us might hear it later. Some of us, it will take a lifetime. And yet, as complex as our world seems to be, and as complex as our faith can be, through God the Holy Spirit, there is unity. There is a common language, a baseline that will ground us. And it's through this common language of the Holy Spirit that God continues to use his church as instruments of putting this world back together, as instruments of reconciling all of creation back to God's self. And so guided by the Holy Spirit, we will travel through this life. We flow in a complex yet simple harmony guided by the unity of the Holy Spirit as we proclaim in one voice, albeit through many different experiences, the good news found in Jesus Christ, our Savior. Let us stand and profess our faith, saying the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. Sisters and brothers, we have been baptized into a holy ministry. As Christians, let us pray to God, saying, Come, Holy Spirit, come. Glory to you, Lord God of our forebears. Guide your church into all truths by your Holy Spirit. Fill our hearts with hope so that we may be fulfilled to the ministries to which we have been called, with faith and boldness. This week in our parish cycle of prayers, we pray for the families of Donna Wilson, Mary Wilson, and Barbara Wilson. Come, Holy Spirit, come. Come, Holy Spirit, come. Glory to you, Lord God. Through the Holy Spirit, you established your church. We pray for all those empowered by the Spirit to proclaim the good news of Jesus Christ, especially those worshiping with us today. We pray for Michael, our presiding bishop, for Daniel, our bishop, for Joseph and Lucianne, our priests, and for the 80th General Convention of the Episcopal Church being held in Baltimore, Maryland, beginning on July 8th. Come, Holy Spirit, come. Come, Holy Spirit, come. Glory to you, Lord God. You delight in the human race. 
And so we trust that your heart breaks with the brokenhearted. Comfort all those who suffer because of natural disasters. Come, Holy Spirit, come. Come, Holy Spirit, come. Glory to you, Lord God. You established the heavens and marked out the foundations of the earth. Let all of the creation praise you forever. Come, Holy Spirit, come. Come, Holy Spirit, come. Glory to you, Lord God. We pray for our loved ones because our hope is placed in you. And hope placed in you, O God, does not disappoint. Bless and heal those for whom we pray, remembering Jennifer Lurie, Irene Steinhardt, Lisa Hart, Judy Austin, Victoria Coates, Valerie Dury, Joanne Navernick, Mary Kelleher, Mary Tatnell, and June Evans. We also pray for the victims of gun violence and their families. Come, Holy Spirit, come. Come, Holy Spirit, come. Glory to you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Bring us at last to see you in your one and eternal glory. Remembering Ronald Gibson, for whom the flowers on the high altar are given, and Joanne Wooten, for whom the flowers on the Lady Chapel altar are given. We also remember John Myers, for whom the sanctuary candle is given, and James McBrien on the anniversary of his death this past week. Come, Holy Spirit, come. Come, Holy Spirit, come. We also pray for special intentions, which may be added at this time, either silently, aloud, or electronically. I ask your prayers for Diane, for relief from pain, and for healing, especially as she prepares for surgery this Friday, for comfort for Brooke. I ask your prayers also for healing for Enid, Carolyn, Phyllis, and Jim, recovering from surgery, and for Mother Jane Cornman, had surgery yesterday. We pray for healing for all. We pray for the repose of the soul of Lois Smith, who died yesterday evening, surrounded by family. Let us give thanks for the healing that is ongoing in our community by the power of the Holy Spirit, in ways we see and ways we don't. And thanksgiving for Barbara's return to us and Allison's health. Almighty God, by your Holy Spirit, you have made us one with your saints in heaven and on earth. Grant that in our earthly pilgrimage we may always be supported by this fellowship of love and prayer and know ourselves to be surrounded by their witness to your power and mercy. We ask this for the sake of Jesus Christ in whom all our intercessions are acceptable through the Spirit, and who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you by thought. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit.
keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. Please stand. The peace of the Lord be always with you. God's peace. God's peace. Please be seated. Good morning. And happy Pentecost to everyone here. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Um, Those who are visiting online, I'm glad you're worshiping with us today as well. Uh, For those who are here immediately following, we're having coffee hour and some uh, red velvet cake I saw in there. So um, I I know that will be happening. And and as you come, a great conversation will be had as well. Um, So please... Before you go home, come and and let's gather for a little bit. Um, Announcements. Looks like everything in um, the bulletin is pretty straightforward. Uh, The the evangelism um, um, training. I need two volunteers. Two volunteers who um, want to join two vestry members, and we are going to go through some training through the diocese about evangelism. And we're going to become the parish experts and, and train our, our congregation on evangelism. And um, the, the thing that I'm going to say throughout, so as, as y'all hear me talk about this over time, you're going to hear me say evangelism is not um, necessarily about getting more people in the church. Evangelism is about telling the good news of Jesus Christ. More people coming to church may be a byproduct, but it's not the goal. So um, evangelism is about sharing the good news. Again, two volunteers. It's going to take some time. I'd love for you to join me and two vestry members for this training. You got any announcements? Sir. Oh, yeah, you. (laughs) Today at the offertory, instead of having an anthem sung, we are all going to be the choir together singing two hymns, no doxology, but two hymns. One is from our hymn book, and it's a more contemporary hymn that we haven't sung, and like the murmur of the dove song. Both of these are printed in the middle of your service leaflet. And the way we'd like to sing this, the first phrase of each of the three verses is sung by all of the men together in unison. The second phrase is sung by the women, and then the last phrase, come Holy Spirit, is sung by everyone. As soon as we do one verse, I think it'll make sense. That's followed by a very interesting hymn that comes from a special collection of music by two very distinguished individuals. The words were written by Thomas Troger, who taught at Yale University. He was a poet, he played the flute, Uh, he was a theologian who was ordained as a Presbyterian minister and then ordained as an Episcopal priest. So he had two ordinations and he served in churches of both denominations. And he was a poet that was was prolific. Um, He died just a couple couple of weeks ago, uh, the first week in April actually. And many of his poems have been set to music by a very fine hymn writer, Carol Duran, as you see this one is. So it's a great combination of words and music, but it has a special connection with uh, St. Mary's congregation in that Carol Duran is the sister of Dr. Ellen Berkland. So we're glad to have a congregational connection. And that means that if you don't sing this nicely the first time, we'll do it a second time. (laughs) So put your heart and soul and your voice into it. Thank you. When you come up for communion, Please make sure you grab one of these um, um, dove um, kites. They're, they're on either side, um, so help yourself. I think we, we, we almost have enough for everybody. Um, some, some brought some, um, but, but help yourself. They're part and we'll be waving them around during our final um, hymn singing. So. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and sacrifice to God. 
All things come of thee, O Lord. And of thy own have we given thee.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere to give thanks to you. Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, through Jesus Christ our Lord, in fulfillment of his true promise, the Holy Spirit came down on this day from heaven, lighting up on the disciples to teach them and to lead them into all truth, uniting people of many tongues in the confession of one faith, and giving to your church the power to serve you as a royal priesthood and to preach the gospel to all nations. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. We give thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation, in the calling of Israel to be your people, in your word spoken through the prophets, and above all, in the word made flesh, Jesus, your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have made, you have brought us out of error into truth, into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. 
And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory, and we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ, and bring us to that heavenly country where with Saint Mary and all your saints we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters through Jesus Christ, our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, Alleluia. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the peace. Alleluia. gifts of God for the people of God. 
Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
Let us pray. God of abundance, you have fed us with the bread of life and cup of salvation. At this time, if you have a birthday or an anniversary coming up or just passed and would like a blessing, please come forward. All right, so I know we have two birthdays. Um, Louis Brunet's grandson, Alex, turned 11 on June 4th. Happy birthday to him. I hope he's listening. Um, and my new daughter-in-law, Cameron Smith, is having a birthday on Tuesday, June 7th. So the birthday prayer. Watch over your children, O Lord, as their days increase. Bless and guide them wherever they may be. Strengthen them where they stand. Comfort them who are discouraged or sorrowful. Raise them up if they fall. And in their hearts may your peace, which passes understanding, abide all the days of their life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. And we have an anniversary, um, Bolana and Sequoia Galat. They are celebrating their 21st um, wedding anniversary on June 9th. Oh God, you have so consecrated the covenant of marriage that in it is represented the spiritual unity between Christ and his church. Send your blessing upon these people who come to renew their promises to each other and grant them in your grace that they may so love, honor, and cherish each other in faithfulness and patience, in wisdom and true godliness, that their lives together may be a witness to your love and forgiveness, and that their home may be a haven of blessing and peace. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The peace of God which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen.
Remember, the response to the dismissal is our ending hymn. Let us go forth into the world rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit.